Hello everybody, welcome to our second factorial ANOVA. So this is one again where we're looking at two factors of investigation, two variables, and within each of those variables we'll have multiple samples or multiple treatments. And so again, what we're doing here is just partitioning the total variation in our data set into its different sources. We use those different sources of variation divided by their degrees of freedom. These give us these mean squared measures. And then we're doing upper tail F tests, just like the most, I'll say simplest ANOVAs. I know they're not simple, but now you've seen how complicated they can get. So just like the earlier ANOVAs that we did, the completely randomized design, where we're doing these upper tail F tests, comparing one estimate of the variance that is influenced by whether the alternative is true or not, compared to this other estimate, estimate of the variance, which is unaffected by whether the null is true or not. If the alternative is true, that estimate of the variance that is in the numerator of our F statistic, it's that inflated estimate, it's large. And so that's why this upper tail F test works because we wanna see is that estimate inflated because the only thing that can make it inflated is if the alternative is true. So we've already gone through one factorial. I talked a whole bunch. It was a long video. So this one, I'll try to keep it a little bit shorter and we'll stick to the problem. And maybe I'll talk about a few things as they come up. A designer of commercial retail space is doing a study to determine which method of managing lineups at the till works best. Method A, or here I have method one, involves many smaller lineups at individual tills. Method B, or here I have method two, involves one large lineup being served by multiple tills. The table below contains the wait times in minutes in three different retail settings. Okay, so here's our two factors. We have here the retail setting. We have three treatments, grocery, electronics, and toys. Then here we have our different method, method one and method two, either having many small lineups, remember this is the many smaller lineups, and this one is a single large. So we've probably all seen these when we go to different stores. Some have multiple tills, each till has their own little lineup, or sometimes you see a one big long lineup, but everybody goes to one of many tills that are available. So. Let's see, do we have evidence to show that there's any difference across the retail setting, any difference in time across these two methods? And of course, we will test for interaction, whether or not we have evidence to show a difference in a combination of a particular method with that particular retail setting. So we are taking our total variation and we're splitting it up into differences across treatments in factor A. We'll call this one factor A. And we have three treatments. We'll call this one factor B. And here we have two treatments. And interaction, different combinations. Maybe there's one particular method of lineups that works better, is faster, in any one of those particular retail settings. And for that, we have R equals, let me clean this up, I don't need all of this. Here we have R equals three, right? Three replications in each of those treatment combinations and random error, okay? And once more, just like in the randomized block, just like in the previous factorial, here I'm giving you SST because while well, SST, you could actually calculate SST, but it would be extremely time consuming. SSE, the math is beyond the prerequisites for this course. So I give you SST and then you can fill in the rest. We have our treatment means, whoops, we have our treatment means along factor B, 
our treatment means along factor A and our interaction means. So let's get into this. Let's build our ANOVA down here. So I'm going to have a retail setting is my factor A. Method is my factor B. I have interaction, error, and total. Sums of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, F, P, and F critical. Whoopsies, what a horrible line. Okay, it's a pretty big, ugly, intimidating looking ANOVA, call it whatever you like. These problems are nothing um, fun about them. But again, good practice, and hopefully you see all the similarities in all of these different types of calculations that we have done. Our tests. Here I have grocery is the same as electronics is the same as toys. Not all are equal. B method one is equal to method two. Again, here I could just write a perfect inequality because I only have two samples. But just for completeness, I'll write, or just for consistency, I'll write not all are equal. But again, in this circumstance with only two samples, you could certainly just write it with a strict inequality. And A, B, interaction. There is no interaction. And our alternative interaction exists. Let's see if I can make that a little more legible. Okay, let's get into our calculations. So SSA, this is B times R, and we're looking at those differences and those means and the grand mean square. Now in the previous video, one of the reasons it was so long, I explained these calculations a little bit more specifically. So if it feels like I'm rushing along, by all means, go back and watch that other, uh, that first video. So here I'm looking at uh, these three treatment means. Oops. If I can get my colors to be a little bit more consistent, my gosh. Highlighter, yellow, there we go. Okay, let's get going. So B times R. B times R, again, that's just the number of observations that each of those treatment means. B times R is six. Well, I have three and three. I have six observations in those treatment means. So that's just going to be two times three. And now we're looking at these treatment means 4.5. Don't forget this grand mean, always the same for all of these calculations, plus 583 plus 383. Okay, so 4.5 minus 472 squared plus 583 minus 472 squared plus 383 minus 472 squared times that by 6, which is our 2 times 3, and I have 12.44. So here's our 12.44. Degrees of freedom, A minus 1, I have 3 treatments, 3 minus 1 is 2, 
divide sums of squares by degrees of freedom, 6.22. Good, a little bit quicker than the last one. Now we're going to do sums of squares across treatments in factor B. And very much, very much the same calculation. Only now I'm looking at these treatments. And always the ground mean. And A times R. Of course, that's the number of observations in each of those treatment memes. I can see I have three, six, I have nine observations. A times R, well, that's just three times three, nine observations. So let's come back down. So that's three times three. And now here I'm looking at 5.33 minus that grand mean, hasn't changed, and 4.11. Now, you can see here, I hope, how having really a minimal number of samples, three treatments in one factor, two treatments in the other factor, is really minimal. And the only reason for that is to keep these calculations short. If we had more samples, more treatments, well, here I have three. If I had four, five, six different treatments, I would have more of those calculations. In factor B, I have two treatments, so I only have two of these. Nothing substantial changes if you have three, four, five, ten different treatments. All it does is make these calculations three, four, five, six times longer. So for the purpose of, of just practice, of illustration, I always keep these short, short, fewer number of treatments. And of course, you can see when we get to interaction, well, even this small sample, small number of treatments, I still have six interactions that we have to test. And so even that's a long calculation. If I had more treatments, oh, it just gets longer so quickly. So let's calculate SSB. 5.33 minus 472 squared plus 411 minus 472 squared multiplied by three times three is nine. That gives me 6.7. 6.7. Our degrees of freedom here, B minus one, B is two, two treatments, so I just have one degree of freedom. And so there's my mean squared. Good, now interaction. This is the tedious one. I'm going to clean up some space here. I think it's a little bit longer. As you've probably already seen, SSAB, this is R. We have these double summations in here. We have the interaction means, that shouldn't have a double, minus the treatment means, why don't I color code this again for you? I know it's a little bit tedious, but maybe it's helpful. So let's have um, interaction means will be the red. Here we've already got treatment means yellow. And so let's have these treatment means, oops, will be blue. Here I have the blue and the grand mean. We'll just keep this one black. Okay. Okay, so minus. That's a horrible color to see. X bar, okay, okay. No yellow. Make those guys purple. There we go minus x bar j minus x bar i plus the grand mean. 
squared. Okay. Replications, I have three replications. Feel free to fast forward, no problem. Six minus purple mean, 533 minus blue mean, 4.5 plus the grand mean squared. Next one, I'm over here, 733, same purple mean, different blue mean, here we're at this blue mean, 583, always the same grand mean, plus I'm at this next red, 267, minus the same purple mean. Because I'm still in that same treatment, right, in factor B. So it's the same purple mean still, 533. I'm in the last blue mean, 383. And the grand mean doesn't change. Now I'm coming down to... We're down here now, three. Now I'm into that new purple mean, 411, and back to 4.5 and the blue mean, and 472. Almost there, almost there. Red, I'm over here now, 433, minus 411 minus, I'm at 583, and the black mean, 472, and last but not least, I'm over here, 5, that purple, 411, that blue, 383, that black, 472. Whew. My hands get sore. Okay, let's crunch some numbers and get this done. 6 minus 5.33 minus 4.5 plus 4.72 squared plus 7.33 minus 5.33 minus 5.83 plus 4.72 squared plus 2.67 minus 533 minus 383 plus 472 squared plus halfway there 3 minus 411 minus 45 plus 472 almost there 433 minus 411 minus 583 plus 472 plus 5 minus 411 minus 383 plus 472 squared equals multiply by 3 and I have 6.17 There's a mistake in there. I know there's a mistake in there because I have an answer key here beside me. So somewhere in there, I've made a mistake. I am not gonna go through and calculate this whole thing again. We should have, you should have a interaction of 28.44. So somewhere in there, and again, you know, I've said it before, that is where mistakes happen, is going through those calculations. I'm rushing a little bit because, my goodness, I don't want these videos to be any longer than they already are. But make sure you go through that calculation and get that number. Maybe you didn't make a mistake. Maybe you got the right number your first time around. So... Here's our interaction is 2844 degrees of freedom here. 
a minus 1 times b minus 1. So that's going to give us 2. 2844 divided by its degrees of freedom gives me 1422. Next, we have error. Well, up here I have, remember, we, we were given SST 6361. So that's our SST. And now from that, if I take the total variation and I subtract out interaction, subtract out method, subtract out retail setting, that gives me 16.03. Degrees of freedom, A times B times R minus 1. So A was 3, B is 2, R minus 1, 3 minus 1, so that's 6 and 2. That gives me 12. 16.03 divided by 12 is 1. Point thirty four and total here n t minus one I have eighteen observations right I have eighteen observations here eighteen minus one is seventeen which is also twelve fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen so it also is everything added up above Let's get our F statistics. So the F statistics, remember, it's always the mean squared with treatments, always divided by MSE in the denominator. So our first one is 6.22 divided by 134. So this one is going to be 4.6. The next one, 6.7 always MSE in the denominator divided by 134. This one is exactly 5. Here I have interaction 1422 divided by MSE 134. Here I have 1061. Okay, now we can do our tests. Now we are testing to see whether or not these, well, I should say more specifically, whether or not these are inflated estimates of the variance. Is that difference between those mean squared treatment calculations for a factor A, B, and interaction, are they statistically greater than MSE? Because MSE, just like the first ANOVAs that we did is always the best unbiased estimate of sigma squared. It is always unaffected by whether the null or the alternative is true. So we have a couple of different distributions. So again, we have to be careful that we don't always assume the same distribution because the denominator degrees of freedom, here, yes, it's always 12. But the numerator degrees of freedom, here I can see I have two, I have one, and then I have two again. But they could all be different. Here we're going to do this test at the, doesn't say, 5% level of significance. So let's come down to our F tables. The first one is 2 in the numerator, 12 in the denominator. So here's 2, and here's 12. Here are my critical values and my probabilities. If alpha is 0.05, I have a critical value of 3.885. Let's call it 3.89. My test statistic there is 4.6. So using the critical value approach, we already know what our conclusion is going to be. Here I can see 4.6. It's, a, it's right in between, not exactly in the middle of, but it's between 3.885 and 5.0. So our p-value is going to be between 0.05 and 0 0.025. 0 0.025. Next one, 
one degree of freedom in the numerator, 12 in the denominator. And so if we come down here, I'm looking at 1 and 12. So here are those critical values. At alpha 0.05, that's going to be 475. Critical value approach, we can already see what's going to happen here. Our test statistic is 5. And so our test statistic is somewhere between these two. So same, same range for our p-value, between 0.025 and 0.05. And finally, interaction. Same distribution as we had for the first test, right? Here we have two and here we have two. So that's gonna have the same critical value. That test statistic, I bet you is off the charts. So here I'm looking at two and 12. And that test statistic is of 10. It's off the charts. The biggest value there is 6.9, and that gives me a probability of 0.01. So our p-value is much less than 0.01. So what do we find here? Reject, reject, reject. I can reject on all three of those tests. So the test on factor A, that was type of retail setting. We absolutely have evidence to show that the, the wait time, because remember we're here we're talking about wait time, and the average wait time in minutes is different between those three different retail settings. So we know there is at least one of those three retail settings that is different from the others. We could use Fisher's LSD, find that difference. So here we rejected. We also rejected on factor B. We have certainly, we have evidence to show that there is a statistically significant difference in average wait time between method one and method two. There's only those two treatments. So certainly not all of them being equal means that, well, those two are different because there's only the two. Interaction. Ah, we also rejected on interaction. We do have evidence to show that the specific combination of a particular method of lineup, many lineups or one long lineup, the particular method of lineup in combination with a specific retail setting, that there are some or at least there is at least one combination that is different from the other combination. So here, what we're looking at, what we're comparing, of course, are all of these means. And we have evidence to show that there's at least one of those means is different from the other. So there is some sort of interaction that's taking place between the type of retail setting and the specific method of lineup that is being used. Okay, that's it. That's another factorial done behind us. Good. I hope that that was helpful. We'll have one more example of a factorial and we'll just probably focus on the problem. We'll go through all of the work, less talking, more doing. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that this was helpful. Bye-bye.